Hello, Maria. Thank you so, so much for being here on my YouTube channel. You are the, actually the first person for me to ever interview on my channel. And I don't think I could think of anyone more legendary or epic to have here. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very honored. Absolutely. So Maria, I was sharing with you just a couple, a minute ago or so that you've been such an inspiration to me. Um, and I just want to actually start out by delving into that a little bit more. When I was keto, I was doing it for chronic Lyme disease. I was doing it for a bunch of autoimmune issues and it really, really improved the quality of my life, being able to go like really high fat. But, you know, there was a time where I was like, how is this going to be possible to hit these macros and to not really get the carbs? And that's when my world opened up to you. I found all of your recipes online and I was so grateful that you made them free. Like your website, all the recipes you put online, you knock everyone out of the park and they're so good. So you, I've tried the most of your recipes. If I want to try something new, I just search that food with your name. And sure enough, there's a recipe. So I am eternally grateful. And I know that there are so many people who you've changed your lives. Um, so when did like, when did the cookbook thing kick off? Um, do you know the story or no? I know bits and pieces and I want to okay. hear it from you and we have plenty of time. Okay. Um, it's, it is kind of a long story. Um, but you know, I was really unhealthy. This was 26 years ago. Now I'm going to be on my wow. anniversary. Um, I was diagnosed with PCOS and I was, uh, obese for my height. Um, I had acid reflux really bad and I had IBS. Anyway, I left his doctor's visit with an antidepressant, um, an acid blocker, and um, something for IBS. And then he, she also told me I couldn't have my own children. And I was 16. I was like, whoa. Wow. And she said it was nothing I was doing wrong. It was just the cards I was dealt in life. But at the time, I worked at a coffee shop where I'd make the scones and the muffins and the cinnamon rolls before I'd go to high school, like before school started. So I'd wake up early, go to the coffee shop and make the stuff. And then after school, I would go back and whatever didn't sell that day, I got to go home with. So you can be darn sure I made extra cinnamon rolls just to make sure I'd have one later. You know? <laughs> um, and that's what I was eating. And I was living off of caffeine and sugar. And um, I was no wonder I had it, but it was said it was hereditary because my grandpas both had diabetes and stuff. So it was like, I yeah. think that we're shown how to eat and that makes it hereditary you know but I, anyway I went home and I I changed uh the way I ate but I didn't want to live off of chicken breast and broccoli right and so I was just kind of creating like a healthy cinnamon roll a keto cinnamon roll and stuff just right off the bat um and I decided to go to college for nutrition and exercise physiology and I was married before I could even legally drink alcohol. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, we've been married for like, what, 20, 20 some years now. I was 17 when I met him. Um, and I told him I couldn't have my own children. And he's like, that's a, okay, let's adopt. So like, I knew right away, like he was the one for me that was so open to adopting and stuff. Cause I, you know, I just, I wanted to do that. I didn't want to go through the drugs. I don't care if anybody else wants to, but I just feel like there's so many children out there, especially going in there for chance, seeing it. I'm like sad we didn't bring home more children. Um, but anyway, uh, we started the adoption, uh, adoption process and he lost his job. And um, I was a rock climbing guide at the time because I was going to be the stay-at-home mom, right? And someone like when you lose a job like that with insurance and everything, whatever you put into adoption goes back to zero. So like all oh, the wow. money, yeah, not only did we lose a job, like all the money we put into the adoption school, it goes back to zero because they have to redo everything once you find a wow. job. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like it was a really low time for myself. Like I did not want to get out of bed. Um, and someone said, well, Maria, why don't you put your recipes together in a cookbook to help raise money for your adoption? And I was like, boom, that's like brilliant. Thank you, Jamie. Um, because I did, it gave me a reason to wake up and I put so much love into all those recipes because I was just focused on the boys and soon enough, like people were buying it all over town. And then we put it on Amazon and now like 
Halle Berry has my book. So I was like, this is <laughs> yeah. real, you know, uh, I feel like just a girl. Like, so I, I'm so grateful to help people like you. Um, you know, my husband suffered with Lyme for a very long time. Yeah. I don't think people realize, like when you say Lyme disease, they're like, Psh, who's that? Right. Yeah. They're I used really, to be like that. Yeah. They don't realize how it rocks your world. Cause I, I, I'm not saying it's the same as cancer, but like when you say, oh, my husband has cancer, they're so sorry for you. This and right. that. We say, the well, Lyme disease, they're like, so? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to people who've had both cancer and Lyme, and they said Lyme was such a hard journey. Mm-hmm. So, um, but anyway, that's my story. Sorry, it's a long, long one, but um, no, that's that, was a, that was a summarized version. And so, how many cookbooks do you have now? Uh, 22. Oh um, I, I don't count the ones that I took. There was like, um, I used to have three smaller ones and I combined them into one. So I just count that as one. That's incredible. That's amazing. Are you still creating new recipes to this day? Oh, every, every there's so many new things to try. Yeah. And especially like I tell people, you know, don't ever judge anybody for their journey because everybody's on a different path and they need to, they need to make it ready for them. Right. Yeah, And I feel like the recipes I wrote 20 years ago is much different than the ones I write now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't use kale and spinach and like right. I, you evolve, you learn. And, you know, yeah, I think that it's, it's a, it's a learning curve and um, yeah, just different ingredients, yeah. I suppose. And yeah. easier, especially with children. Like I'm like, your recipes are much easier now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think that it's really important that you are open-minded and willing to evolve and cut out certain ingredients and find a way you made bread from egg whites. (laughs) Like, um, you went from keto to carnivore and Mm -hmm. you could have just stayed keto. Like you probably could have just kept on that train and continued to make money, but it sounds like you had a conviction about your own health and you wanted to go that direction. So when was that conversion for you from keto to carnivore um when craig craig really was looking for an answer like i need to feel better and he tried everything with lime we appreciate everybody's messages but people message us all the time have you tried this have you tried that and it's like yes we and insurance didn't cover it because he was diagnosed that he didn't have it the first time so like i I don't even drive a car because we're just putting money into this so it's just i want him to get better i don't i don't need a car um actually somebody tried to steal my bike last night we had the cops yeah i heard uh, heard that a while ago is this like a reoccurring thing okay so they stole my bike which is an e-bike which i loved and so i have a new one and we have cameras now and a big lock because it's a, like an open garage. Yeah. Um, and they tried stealing it last night at like 2 a.m. I know. Oh my gosh. I'm but sorry. Have, That's uh, ridiculous. I know. But we have who they are. Like even when the cop came over, he was like, oh, is that so-and-so? Like, it's like he knew that person. I was like, get my other bike because he has it, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, um, so back to the carnivore thing. Yeah, he was just looking into like, how can he feel better? And um, that, like cutting out certain things, like, you know, it's kind of baby steps. Um, yeah. We went and visited some friends and they made us, we call them meat cookies, hamburgers, you know, without the patty or without the bread. And they put like a garnish on top of like this, a little coleslaw or something. And it was totally no sugar or anything like that. But even that little bit of coleslaw, made him hurt for like three days after that wow it's just when he has certain plant material he really has issues with it and so I'm not going to make him do it by himself you know so uh we just kind of and even the kids like it's funny because I'll I'll make recipes and I'll be like hey try these pancakes and I remember one time my son started crying he's like can I just have some eggs (laughs) (laughs) They just they don't have a big sweet tooth you know and they just wanted some savory food they're like no I don't want to try the pancakes it's like, oh, geez. <laughs> so it's just wow. cool to see them on the 32 um they would choose a steak over anything you know like they love it's funny when we would go to restaurants especially a few years ago um you know do you need a children's menu I was like no no they're gonna eat <laughs> yeah. I, the children's menu is like a 
such a sad thing. That's amazing. That's so cool. So I know that you are, I mean, you are like the author creator of the protein sparing modified fast and that's huge. And I know that has helped a lot of people. I've done it myself. I got the most shredded I've ever been was incorporating that and just higher protein, not really fasting, intermittent fasting, of course, but nothing extreme. It's just like raise the protein. And mm -hmm. I, I had abs, <laughs> um, it works, but yeah. I know that you have to become fat adapted first. So when did you, when did that light bulb go off for you when you created that? Um, uh, my first book, not a cookbook, my first, uh, nutrition book, I wrote about my pure protein days. So this book is well over 20 years old. Um, okay. it's called keto, keto adapted. Um, I talked about pure protein days and so I didn't come up with the term protein sparing modified fast. Cause I think that's kind of a confusing term. I didn't come up with that. That's a long, long time ago, but I just created these pure protein days. That's what I call them. I didn't know anything about protein sparing modified fast where I, with PCOS, my weight loss was hard. Like it was very, very difficult. And, um, I stuck with keto because right away the depression went away. My IBS went away and my acid reflux went away. I was like, boom, I'm sold. I'd love this. I like when people know me, uh, from high school, they're like, who are you now? Cause I'm just a different person, you know, like food wow. really affects your mood, you know, it's huge. Yeah. So that's what kept me on the journey. But, you know, obviously like I was, you know, 80 pounds heavier than I am now and I'm very short. So it was, I wanted to lose some weight and just doing a typical keto thing. Yes. I felt good, but I also wasn't losing weight. I was doing way too much dairy, um, way too many nuts, nut flowers. Yeah. Um, so I would do these periods of time where I cut hundred percent of dairy, cut out the nuts. And then a few days a week, I would do pure protein days where it was basically just lean protein and it worked like massive good. And I almost felt better on those days. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, it's a lower calorie. And I also am a big believer, like you do need fat for fat soluble vitamins and your hormones. But when you have so many fat cells, when you look into that, when you have your stuff, fat cells are so stuffed, that's first of all, not a good thing to be in a good situation. And you can certainly gain weight on keto. You can certainly gain weight on carnivore. We see it all this time where your fat cells are too stuffed. And the best way to reverse that, because that's when your fat cells are too stuffed, that's insulin resistance, you know, that's type two diabetes. Yeah. The best way to reverse that is to shrink the fat cells and gain or maintain your muscle. And when people lose weight, what I see a lot with like fat fast or something like that, when you look at the, the body, they're losing a lot of muscle mass because it's easy to lose. You yeah. know, you need some sort of glucose. You just do. And it's going to steal it from your muscles. And so I didn't want to lose any muscle. And so I was like, yep, I'm going to focus on protein. And I lowered the fat, not to zero, but to like 30 grams, which you can still absorb fat soluble vitamins, right. your gallbladder is still working. So, but you know, I don't do it all the time. I don't do it anymore, but that's, that's how, that's how it came about for sure. And yeah. I don't know, just played around yeah. with the recipe and the bread fits in there. Perfect. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's delicious. You're just a total pioneer. I think that you're one of, no, yeah, you're one of the pioneers. You just, um, you use your critical thinking skills. And I think that's honestly like a lost art because everyone's looking for the next trend or craze. And you just kind of looked at yourself and figured out what felt good and what made sense. Um, have you always, I mean, this might be like a more personal question, but have you always been like a creative thinker? Have you always been thinking outside the box or are you more of a trend follower? Are you a leader or a trend follower? Like looking at yourself from the past. I'm never going to follow the trends. Um, <laughs> I thought you would say that. Uh, I am a very stubborn German girl where, <laughs> no, but that's how I was able to stick with it because I mean, mm. I'm telling you, people made fun of the way I ate. I'm sure. They, they made fun of my recipes. They made fun of all of that. And I was like, I don't care because I don't like, I, I do care if I hurt your feelings or like, I'm very sensitive about that. Like I can't sleep at night, but if I'm you're just really coming out and judging me, like, psh, I don't, yeah. I don't need that. Like, yeah. but I did, you know, there wasn't, keto was not popular. Um, it was the weird thing. It was still, you know, people were like, 
is this like Atkins, you know? Um, but yeah, I think I get a lot of like pushback for a lot of things I've done in my life and I'm okay with that. Yeah, good. Because I think that you lead by example, you know, people don't have to listen to you talk. They just have to take a look at you and you can see that you're successful. Um, I think that's the best testimony that you can have. And you do it with love. Um, have you ever played around with high fat versus um, high yeah. protein? So this is what happened. Um, I wrote a book with um, someone who was in the community. You know who he is. He's not in the community anymore. Um, okay. And he was like, Maria, you know, yeah. Mm. Too much protein turns into sugar. And I was like, oh, it does? And he went on and on and on. And um, I was like, oh, I... Okay, Craig, my husband's Craig. I was like, uh, too much protein isn't good. And so he's like, okay. And so we're looking into it. And um, so I started writing more high fat, um, working more high fat with my clients. And guess what? Everybody gained weight. Right. They didn't see the, they didn't see the results that they wanted. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because I talked to Dr. Ted Neiman about this because he got pulled into that at the same time. And uh you know, just how we're both back on the protein. He's like, it didn't, it didn't work. And so we're back both on the protein, but yeah, there was a time that I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm harming people with too much protein. And so I stopped mm -hmm. doing that. And, but that's where the nutrients are. And that's what I think people need to realize. Yes. Like when they drink like a fatty coffee, a bulletproof coffee, they're they should rather have like a steak and some eggs because it's probably going to be the same calories and this is going to have nutrients. This has yes. zero. Yeah. MCT sugar has more nutrients than MCT oil does. Oh. But people jump on the bandwagon to like just chug, you know, MCT oil and it's not what you should be doing. Um, chewing your food is so good for you in so many ways. It registers hormones, but mm. this whole idea of like just drinking a fatty coffee and then thinking that you're fasting until you know, two o'clock when you eat, it's like, you're not, you're not fasting. You had to digest 500 calories of that fat, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. And I think that is personally, that's something that drives me crazy. Um, the high fat thing is a craze right now. And I get it. It works for a lot of people. And I had to do like four to one fat to protein at one point when I was bed bound, I, I was having non-epileptic seizures. It really helped but there's a time and place and it's not sustainable. It's not a lifestyle because of what you said, the nutrients aren't in the fat. And I had to literally let go of like my glucometer. I had to let my blood sugar get higher than I wanted to see when I went carnivore, but it saved my life. And I had to just get in that protein. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I yeah. was such a fool for a long time. I was tied to the ketones and I wanted my blood sugar to be like 60 or 70 and turns out that's not a good place to be long term um so I think that's what you're hard. doing is great well thank you but like that is a therapeutic ketogenic diet right, right. for epilepsy seizures alzheimer's but you know what when they they study children that are on a ketogenic diet for epilepsy they fail to thrive they don't grow yep. They don't, they don't thrive as an adult because they're eating not enough protein, yep. you know? So that's, so my kids are not on a therapeutic ketogenic diet, but they definitely, they're, they're keto. And yeah, people get hung up on the ketones getting higher. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have better results. Yeah. Um, bio, bio coach, if you're familiar with them, they hired me to do blood sugar videos. And I'm like, you might not like what I'm going to say. <laughs> they're like, no, use it as a tool. And I was like, so I'm just telling, I go out on a morning run and I test my blood sugar and it's oh, I super saw this. Yeah, like I yeah. should stop running, right? But people- right. I loved that post. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. That was exactly what I'm talking about. So for our viewers, Maria made, I just saw the post that her and her son were going running and their blood sugars were going up into that like over 100, right? Or after a meal, it was over 100. That doesn't mean that you're not a fat burner. It just means that your body has an ebb and flow. And it also means that you're metabolically flexible because you're not eating gobs and gobs of carbs. Um, so your body is making what it needs. And that makes total sense. Yeah. It's just like, there's certain stressors to the body that are going to raise blood sugar, like exercise will, sauna will, uh, mm. cold 
therapy or cryotherapy will, um, does it mean that you shouldn't do those? No, it doesn't mean that at all. And you know, what's interesting, your lowest blood sugar ever will be when you drink alcohol. Oh, does that, yeah. does that mean that you should just like stop exercising? Everybody just get some, you know, vodka going. No. Yeah. Um, when you said alcohol, it reminded me of something that I learned from you, which is oxidative priority. Could you briefly explain that? Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing that up. So oxidative priority is the, how your body preferences, preferences different fuels, right? So there's alcohol is fuel number one, because there's no storage and it's toxic, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have alcohol with like a big meal of a steak, a baked potato and uh, you know, so wine and let's say you do ex exogenous ketones, right? Sure. So first it's holding on to everything else and it's burning alcohol first. That's why alcoholics have a very low A1C because they're burning the alcohol for food. Yeah. They look like they have a great blood sugar or, you know, A1C over time, but it's not a good thing. Um, the next thing it's going to burn is uh, exogenous ketones. So if you're taking exogenous ketones, I do think they have a place, but it's not for weight loss. It's not for overall health. Yeah. I think it's dangerous to think like, oh, just have the muffin and take the ketones, right? Because <laughs> now you have high glucose and high ketones. I just think that's like a recipe for cancer because it's a whole bunch of fuel sources. Mm. So it's going to burn the exogenous ketones next. And then it's going to go to carbohydrates, protein, fat, and then you can get into your body fat for fuel. So it has to go through all those different things. So do you need alcohol? No, I'm better without it. Exogenous ketones, very expensive, things waste some money. And then you focus on, you know, the carbohydrates, protein, and fat, however you want to do them. But when you eat the protein, it's preferentially used for muscle protein th synthesis, um, your beautiful hair, you know, like, it shows on you externally because, you know, your yeah. skin and everything's like turning over. Um, I do a lot of work with clients and I'll ask a lot of body signs because mm. that tells me, you know, do you have white spots on your nails and different things mm. like that? That tells me a lot about how are you absorbing nutrients? Are you even eating them? Like how that's going on because your body's smart, but like, you just have to realize you have to go through all that fuel and people just think like fat shoots out your butt. It doesn't because you'd have diarrhea all the time. You do, <laughs> you do. do you remember the last month? You oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. So when I was uh, in high school, they had these wow chips, right? Uh -huh. They were called wow chips. It was just a perfect name for them because if you ate too many of them, you'd have anal leakage. That's what it said on the bag. <laughs> because that's because the fat goes to the fat cells before it's either you're in the negative fat flux or fat, or the positive fat flux. It's just, people just think like, it's just a free energy source. And it's not right. Yeah, and I actually saying, recently. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. bad. Saying like right. there's a place for it. Yes, exactly. I 100% agree. There is that myth is still floating around. I just had a client ask me, you know, do we just lose? She asked if we absorb the amount of fat that we need and then we just poop out the rest. That's what someone told her, like a grown adult. And I, I, I don't know how people could ever even make sense of this. There's some like new keto doctors out there saying this. I didn't know. I don't know who made it up, but I am not happy about it. It's like, I like, I thought, it's we, just, I thought we were past this and we're not. I did, I did I too. I think people no, just want excuses to eat and eat and eat fat. And the problem is fat is so hyper palatable. And no. I'm speaking from personal experience. I was living on fat bombs. And it was like, oh my gosh, I can just eat and eat and eat. I'm never satiated. It's like, hello, you need protein. And yeah. so, yeah, it's, um, it was a light bulb for me. It changed my life. Um, thank you for going through that. That makes total sense. And it takes a lot more to get to our own body fat. Yeah. I mean, protein has these signals in your gut, the GLP one to tell you that you're satisfied and full. Um, so that's why I think it's really important, but yeah, there's like a, there's a doctor out there saying, oh, you're not losing weight. Have a stick of butter when you wake up. It's like, well, I don't think that's healthy either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, it doesn't really sound sustainable. Um, I think that people make it more complicated than it needs to be kind of just makes sense to eat some fatty meat because yeah. that has everything we need. Yep. I do. But I do think food addiction is real. And yeah. I think that people are replacing one food addiction of, you know, the standard American diet with just this. I know them personally. I've worked with those people personally. 
that they're like, oh, Maria, I love your recipe so much. I just, I can't stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something to address too. Yes, definitely. And I, I work with people with eating disorders, binge eating, a lot of binge eating. And I do recognize that even they get stuck with the high fat craze and they can't stop eating because they're afraid to eat protein. And you just have to, everyone just needs to give themselves permission to eat the protein because your body, you're going to saturate your cells with nutrients, like eat some liver, eat some organs, eat some protein. And then your body registers like, I'm happy. I have what I want. Thank you. But you can't, you can eat fat to infinity and you will never get those things that you'll get from protein. And that's key. It is key, especially like bone health. Um, Mm. Sadly, my mom, she, she's very active at her age she's in her seventies, but she plays pickleball and she took a dive to hit the ball and she broke her arm. Ouch. And I'm, mom, do you know what your bones are made up of? And I'm like protein because like, I love you mom, but she eats a little bit of protein and like everything else. Right. Like she, I used to, I was a waitress where they would come and eat and she'd eat like a little bit of her fish. And, you know, she'd make sure to finish everything else. And it's like, no, eat the whole fish and eat a little bit of everything else if you want yeah. to. Uh, but I just wanted her to see these studies showing that women are reversing osteopenia and osteoporosis, not with calcium, it's with protein. Yes. The high protein diet, well, that's what your bones are made up of. The sheath that your bones are made up of protein. So I think like there's just such a message there. Like when you look into the different illnesses, like protein is king. Yeah. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you got to be here because I can oh, reference no. this video now for people who don't take my word for it. Um, so what, what does a day of eating look like for you? I personally, I don't like that question because people want to copy what I'm doing, but without sharing macros or calories, what are your favorite foods to eat on a daily basis? Uh, I'm like a dog. I could eat the same thing. And it, <laughs> uh, I am I like, it doesn't bother me. So uh, for a long time, I got into OMAD and I ended up losing a lot of muscle mass then. So mm-hmm. I don't like, it wasn't, wasn't for me. I'm way too active for that. So yeah. I don't eat one time a day, three. Um, I don't like to be very stuffed. So I prefer to split it up, but I still do a fasting window. I still like eat in an eight hour window to get cool. all the benefits and stuff. So, um, after I run in the morning, I'll have steak and that's, I, I like filet mignon. So oh, yeah. big old, and I have a really good recipe for the best steak sauce. And I have that with it. I, cause I always have it in the fridge. So that's my first meal. And then my second meal is usually, uh, mahi mahi. Cause we yeah. have it here. So I make that. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to think of like, I make this sauce with it too. I, I like sauces because I think that makes everything better. <laughs> yeah. And then it can fit in my macros too. Cause that's where yeah. some of the fat comes in, you know, cause right. tenderloin is very lean. And so is mahi, mahi but I don't, mahi. Yeah. I don't like ribeyes. I'm not a big fatty meat person. So like, that's where that comes into play. And mahi is very lean. And um, so I do like a sauce with that and I might have some pickles in that sauce or something. So it's not a hundred percent carnivore. Um, but then um, dinner is where it changes. The protein sparing bread usually comes into play there. Um, maybe I'll have like, I usually have my eggs at night. So I'll have like, you know, a sand, like an egg sandwich with that or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll always have a little bit of the equip. Like I'll have a little like a shake because I am, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should just turn it off the noise in my head, but I don't like all the cruel comments. I was called thunder thighs as a child mm. and now people call me anorexic and it hurts. Um, and so I was trying to, I know I'm trying to put some weight on. So I was doing like the equip, like a drink at night and stuff. Um, I do like it cause it's just high in protein just to get that yeah. in there. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, like, I, I don't want to cry on you, but like, I don't know. Everybody just needs to like, shh, stop being so judgy. That's all. I cannot even, well, you don't deserve that. And I've lived it. I was called, you know, I was misdiagnosed with an eating disorder. And it's funny when I gained healthy weight, when I came out of, I was 69 pounds. And then I gained all the way up to 155, which was pushing it for my height. 
And then I started getting flack in, in the other direction. Like my chiropractor was like, Hey, you can slow down now. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like I just escaped death. And you want to talk about my weight. So people, Maria, you're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're a genius. You're smart. You're loving. You're kind. Just keep pushing away the hate. <laughs> you look amazing. Oh, you are so clearly strong. Um, so people are going to hate. They're always going to, I always get it. And like, I just actually had a miscarriage and I gained like 15 pounds before that. And I was beating myself up, um, mainly cause it was like all for nothing. It felt like, and, and I felt like, oh man, people are going to start judging me now. Cause now I'm not pregnant, but I could probably lose weight. And I just, I couldn't even believe I was having those thoughts, No, but it really just comes from our society you know, it's toxic. So just remember to be the person to lead by example, to push away that toxicity. It's crap. You look amazing. Oh, I'm so grateful for you. It's just interesting. I had, a, I worked with a woman who said, Maria, I wish I would gain weight when I cheated because she was uh, a type two diabetic that ignored it for so long. She also, she blew out her beta cells. She was kind of like a type one also. Oh my gosh. Wow. Having she had a stroke and she just had her first child. And she's like, I wish I would gain weight because it would keep me. We're a judgy society. She's like, that's, we don't change things until it shows externally. Like we have acne right. or something like that. And it's just so twisted. Cause she's like, people look at me and think I'm super healthy. And she's like, I'm the sickest person in the room. You know, and it's yeah. just, I, I wish we could stop that. Cause like you, you're putting yourself out there for free and you're giving free information out there and they have to just poop on yeah. it. You know? <laughs> I do. Not cool. I like your use of the word poop in this interview. It really cracks me up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I totally agree. People, it's going to always happen, but you, I really mean it from my heart of hearts. You look amazing and you inspire me. And I know you inspire so many other people and people just need to mind their own business. Um, yeah. It's ridiculous. And you also prioritize nutrient dense foods. Yeah. Um, you're exercising every day. Like I would say that those people are probably maybe jealous or <laughs> they just want to figure out what your secret is. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you felt like you could share that, but I love the equipped foods as well. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to more recipes that you come up with their protein powder. I know that we both have a carnivore brownie recipe. Yours is different than mine. So everyone check out Maria's car carnivore brownie recipe, but that protein powder is a game changer for me. I adore it. It's delicious. It's so good. I, it's just clean. It's a protein yeah. powder I can like stand behind. Too many of them have stuff in them I don't like. Yeah, that just, we don't need. No, yeah, it's great. So what does Maria do outside of you? what you teach? I know you, first of all, actually, before I ask that, what do you offer in terms of coaching? Because I have a friend who's doing stuff with you. What does that look like? Um, there's different levels because everybody's at like a different journey in their life or they, you know, they could do a phone consult with me that includes like everything, the support and, uh, macros and everything you need. I have this really cool, Craig's awesome. Um, I couldn't do what I do without him. He made a website where I have all these filters, like 50 different filters. So you can click dairy free, nut free, nightshade free, egg free. Yeah, I've used it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I love that filter. So you can click the filter and then below it, I don't know if you saw this, he added fat grams, protein grams. Yeah. So if you're trying to find something higher in fat, fertility, whatever, lower in fat, you can pick that and then you can pick which range of protein you want. And then it's going to give you boom, thousands of those recipes to fit in your, because I always tell people pick dairy free, pick nut free. That's going to help you. And then, so that's, that's my, like my favorite tool. Um, there's also yeah. different subscriptions where you have weekly meetings with me every Sunday, like I said, and you know, you can pick either the silver membership or the platinum membership. And like what we tell people is it's cheaper than Weight Watchers and it's going to change your life, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what, like, you have that too, but it's cheaper than like the crappy Weight Watchers. I remember doing that stuff, you know, just count your points. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's what I do most of the time. I don't know. I like to do it. I like my job. I, you love your job too. Yeah. It's so fun. That's awesome. So what do you do outside of those things? What are your favorite hobbies? Um, probably paddle boarding with the whales. <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds incredible. I'm going to wow. post a video later today on Instagram 
Um, so they call me the whale whisperer here because you're not supposed to go by the whales and I don't, but I'll go out there and all of a sudden like whales will come around me. I have a bunch of pictures in the place here where whales are like, they come, they just, it's so cool. And you're just on your paddleboard and usually a baby whale will like, you know, try to push you off or something and see what happens. And like that wow. takes my breath. That's incredible. My husband and I just went to Cabo san lucas for our honeymoon and the whales were migrating and it was incredible i cannot believe but i would be terrified up close like on a paddleboard it is, that'd be so scary it is, it's, like i love animals like i love just like being around them um and we went on an african safari and i had a gorilla come and sit right next to me and it's <laughs> still not, it's but i it's still not the same feeling that i get when i'm with the whales like that i like get teary like i just Oh, yeah. I just love them. So they're so smart. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's incredible. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here? No, I think like we covered a lot and it's so cool that we're on the same page because I never know. Um, I try to like just do my own thing and, you know, um, and it's just cool that we're on the same page for a lot of things. So I do think like yeah. we both said that has its place and in certain areas like that is going to be more important yes. for you but um but also just the whole judging thing it's just it hurts both ways so yeah 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 I appreciate you I appreciate your heart and you shine very very bright and so thank you for being here and um I look forward to getting to know you more hopefully you can be a special guest at one of my retreats I hope to make it out to Hawaii maybe but yeah. I'm really looking forward to it no matter where you have it I'll I'd love to come I'd love to come okay. meet you in person Awesome. Sure. Thank you so much, Maria. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.